2017 meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees to order. Uh, roll call. Joe Carroll is not here yet. He noticed us that he would be arriving late. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Rob McSorley. Present. Nick Rico. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes of April 27th, 2017. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any corrections or uh, omissions to uh, take note of? None. All those in favor of motion to approve? None opposed. All right, Superintendent's Operations Report. Okay, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of April is included in the packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.39 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 95% uh, BOD removal and 98% TSS removal for the month with an average effluent concentrations of 9 and 4 milligrams per liter respectfully. Copy the pump station flows for the month of April is in your, including your packet. Rudy, Josh, and I inspected the manholes within the Liberty Road pump station service area to try to locate any additional sources of flows, the, that excess flows that we're chasing. Uh, we did identify some suspect sources, which we uh, are currently actively looking into. Uh, Glenn, Carl, and I met with Wooden and Curran to discuss and scope out um, the uh, work involved for the replacement of the uh, uh, station control panel at pump station six. Uh, this is a budgeted item. Uh, Rudy and Scott completed the biannual fog cleaning of the pump stations. Um, on 172 US Route 1, uh, an engineer was uh, conducting some survey work at a pro at a, on a, an adjacent parcel when he discovered an exposed sewer. He reached out to me and I identified it as the sewer for 172 U.S. Route 1. Uh, the service is a private service and runs through an easement uh, and eventually connecting to the public sewer on Foxcroft Circle. I also found a broken clean out on this service. I contacted the owner and met with the owner's contractor on site. They have already relieved the pooling water behind the service and will be armoring and insulating the exposed sewer this summer. Um, uh, the septic receiving station mag meter uh, was replaced um, uh, by Carl, Carl completed this work uh, and uh, that's now back up and running. Uh, Glenn, Phil and I met with RMI to discuss sludge hauling and disposal options. Currently we under, are under contract with RMI for the ash which we use within our composting operations. RMI uh, provided, I, I have since um, provided you a copy of their letter, a cost proposal uh, for our evaluation. Uh, the sludge would be beneficially reused uh, primarily for agricultural purposes. Uh, we're fortunate that uh, when the treatment plant was upgraded, the construction at the treatment facility um, sludge bay was designed to accept a trailer dump, uh, which uh, reduces our hauling costs. Um, and I'm going to speak towards that, the uh, RMI proposal right now. They provided a proposal uh, to haul our sludge, dewatered sludge, from the facility. Uh, and it came in at uh, $75 a ton. Um, we are currently spending about, uh, with the composting operation, we're, we're spending approximately $71 per ton uh, for disposal at this point. Um, I'd like to move forward and, and pilot test this since there's no structural uh, changes at the, at the facility. Um, and this is a good time to be doing that because uh, some of the savings is as a result of uh, labor reduction. And the intent would be if, if the, the labor reduction is there, um, we wouldn't be replacing, filling uh, that uh, 13th staff member that, uh, that becomes open with uh, Gary reti re retirement. 
Um, truck 54, the one-ton dump, we received the new one-ton dump this, this past month. Uh, again, this was another one of the uh, uh, budgeted item. Uh, we, uh, Josh continues to attend the operating training course uh, put on by Jetsy. The last class uh, will be June 15th which I will be teaching at, along with uh, Andre Brusso from uh, Sanford. Uh, the topic will be nitrification and denitrification. I've been working on updates to the district's fat, oil, and grease policy, and um, I will be providing you a draft uh, probably uh, beginning of next week, such that you have uh, some time to review it during the week, uh, during the month prior to the next meeting give you a little extra time than, than the packet usually provides. Our contract with our small electric service uh, um, accounts was coming to an end of its term. Consequently, we went out to bid for these accounts. I attached a copy of the bid results, which uh, looked at terms of service that ranged from 12 months to 37 months. I executed a contract with Electricity Maine for for a 25-month term, which will bring these accounts in line with our medium service accounts. In summary, the executed contract was uh, for um, Electricity of Maine, start date of November. Um, the term is 25 months, and the cost is uh, 6.712 cents per kilowatt hour. Our current contract price is 9.35. Uh, cents per kilowatt hour. This reduction in cost will save us approximately six thousand dollars a year. And oh, one other item: we did. I, I left it. We received a check from Efficiency Maine for our LED uh, lighting upgrade that we did this year, and the check was for approximately six thousand dollars. Wendy, was that correct? Just over six thousand dollars. Any questions? Uh, just I want to point out, I think you skipped over the staffing changes section oh, of your report. Did I? Okay, I apologize. Staffing. Um, with the retirement of Gary Howard, I made the following changes to our staffing plan. Uh, Glenn will move into the chief plan operator role with a focus on the uh, treatment facilities. Carl will be overseeing the overall management of the collection system. Rudy will maintain his role as senior collection system operator, but will uh, report to Carl. Scott will be changing from the collection system to plant operation, and Josh will be moving from the plant to the collection system. So there's a, uh, a lot of changes going on at the plant, and we're all, uh, all seems to be working out so far. Yep. So. Great. Um, I just wanted to, uh, any questions on the superintendent? Okay, Ben. Oh, the RMI. And you only had one bid. Did we go out for like? I uh, did bids, or was it just? I didn't go out to bid. I do have some bid results from the Sludge Consortium. I think they're called Sludge Cartel. Sludge Cartel. <laughs> uh, the Southern. I like consortium better. <laughs> yeah. The uh, uh, they go out to bid. The Southern Maine, a bunch of Southern Maine communities go out to bid for a sludge disposal, and I believe. Nick, you're paying like $89 a ton right now? 87 86 will be the new cost. So is there new Current, cost? I mean, we pay 86 25 per ton. So, you know, I thought this was a very fair proposal where we're kind of pilot testing it. I didn't I didn't feel right going out to a full open yeah, board. Sure. So would that be like a price they quote for a five-year contract, or is that just how, how does that work? Um, What's the term? Their contracts. Ours is for five years. Five years, yeah. I don't know what RMI would be. I don't know if it would there would be something I'd have to talk to them about. But we certainly can go out to bid. One of the beauties of our operation is, um, I mean, we could pilot test it. We don't have to make any um, physical modifications. Um, we can always go back to compost if the, if the price is still warrant it. That's good. Um, just a point of order, because it's the same vendor and it's just a little bit more money, do we even need to approve it, or is this just something under the discretion of the superintendent? Um, well, I think it's something that we should consider because it's really a, it's really a change in the way we do operations mm -hmm. in the facility. So 
our modus operandi for years, decades now, has been to operate our own co composting mm -hmm. operation. Um, and there were strategic reasons to do that, uh, among them cost control at the time. So I think making a change like this, it's prudent for the superintendent to bring that to the trustees to discuss any issues that would be associated with it. Um, for example, if we give up our license to compost, you know, how difficult might it be to secure an additional license in the future? You know, if we go five years, if, if, we, if, we, if we make this change, uh, eliminate composting, would we be able to maintain a license to resume composting, or would we at some future time have to go back and reapply. try and reapply and, and obtain a license? So this, I think there's some issues there that could kind of tie into fiscal issues for us. So mm -hmm. if, if this price were to ratchet up to a level that we thought was uh, putting us at a disadvantage and we wanted to resume composting, but there were other issues that we then had to deal with um, undetermined as of today because we don't know what the situation would be. That would be something that I think would be prudent for the for the board to have considered prior to prior okay. to this decision. So I, I think it's prudent for the superintendent to bring that uh, bring that to us. I um, do have a meeting with DEP tomorrow. They're coming out to do a uh, our facility inspection tomorrow, and this is one of the items I will be talking with them on. Would that be Mike Clark? Uh, no, Matt Height will be coming up, but you know, I'll begin the conversation with Matt and then it will continue with Mark. Uh, Jason or Rob, any questions or issues? Um, uh, I had another question on a different sure, item. Um, on the supply and delivery mm -hmm. uh, of supply. electricity, it's just supply. That's supply. All right, thank you. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. That'd be a great price for supply and delivery. Yes, it is. <laughs> for electricity. Did you do this just as the district or part of a group? Just as a district. Cool. Thank you. Um, in your discussions with RMI, is that their firm proposal or is there room for further negotiation with them on that? I think it's pretty firm. I mean, I could always push the envelope some, yeah. but um, it, you know, they came out um, with us and sat down with us and we talked about various options. The fact that we can uh, real, use a trailer dump to uh, convey the, to collect the sludge in versus a roll off really helps um, with cost control because mm -hmm. it can haul, I think, believe it, I believe it's 50 tons versus 30 tons is what a, a roll off container is limited to. Roll offs 30 yards. 50 yards versus and it's 1,700 yeah. uh, pounds per cubic yard, so it's a little less. It's like 20 tons. Yeah. Okay, so um, if we decide to move forward on this option, we'll probably have some discussions with you. You can do an evaluation on the cost effectiveness of their proposal mm -hmm. and make, a, make a, a report back to the board. Yeah. And, uh, and if any of that translates into negotiation, then we probably should do that in executive session if it's related to the negotiation of the contract terms. You want me to bring it back on uh, next month under uh, new items or old items, if I guess? you're ready, I think so. I think, yep, okay. And the board can vote on it. Great. Well, how long will the pilot be? Um, I would do it over the summer, you know, get a good feeling about it. I did have one question, actually, Charlie. Yeah, ahead, uh, yes. Regard the, the staffing changes, are you going to be looking to hire a, a new person? That depends on how this, uh, how this pilot out. test works out. Gotcha. Um, you know, with with this, if we go de sludge dewatering, it frees up uh, an operator almost 20 hours a week to change his concentration on working within the plant or out in the collection system. Okay. Um, there's 
No further questions of the superintendent. Um, next item is correspondence, 108 Musty Room. All right. Uh, DM Roma Consulting Engineers requested an ability to serve letter for a proposed 3,000 square foot commercial office showroom. The existing house on the site will be demolished and the service will be reused. Attached as a copy of the district ability to serve letter. As noted in the letter, this project will, re will require an approval from the, the trustees once it gets to that point. Which, which property is this, David? Um, it's just down from the entrance to Lowe's on the left there. It actually, the, it, it's the, the, as you're pulling into the Lowe's roadway, um, yeah. I forget the name of that. Um, Gallery Boulevard. Uh, Gallery yeah. Boulevard. That uh, area, that's the, gre the, the green area, that actually, the house that actually was part of that parcel and they they carved out, it's the first Past house. Past the, the drive Past going the drive. towards South Portland? Yeah. Oh, okay, yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Aubrey. Do we know that that six inch existing lateral is in good condition? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> is one of the things I have been requiring, and you'll notice it on, on uh, one of the proposals, uh, are, is TVing existing services. And that's something that we've been doing anyway, but now it's, I'm, I'm starting to write it actually into, in, into our approvals. Perfect. I'm, I'm waiting for you to get down the agenda a little bit so okay. I can. You, you were poised. I knew you. I, I didn't want to <laughs> um, go on if you had something to go to. Okay. Next item is uh, old business, of which there is none. Uh, item seven is new business. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, recuse myself from this item since I am an uh, employee of the firm who has submitted this. And uh, we'll step back and listen to the pleasant deliberations of the board. This is on uh, item eight, Plaza Drive. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without objection. Um, okay, the first item under new business is 25 Plaza Drive. On behalf of JDR Trust uh, 2, Sebago Technics requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from a proposed eight unit apartment building with 5,224 square feet of office space on the first floor and a proposed 5,000 square foot um, building to house a banking institution. <clears throat> The project will be serviced by a private gravity sewer system and discharge into the existing gravity sewer on Gorham Road. The project is located on a site that is currently developed for office and retail use with an existing 11,800 square foot building in parking lot. The existing building is currently connected to the public sewer and is approved for 472 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. <coughs> The project is within the original service area and currently approved for 472 gallons per day of domestic wastewater. The capacity reserve fee is calculated as shown below and is adjusted monthly based on engineering news records construction cost index. Any future flows in excess of these allocations are subject to additional capacity reserve fees. The capacity reserve fee is due prior to the issuance of the sewer extension permit. Current capacity reserve fee is $15.54 per gallon. That's uh, May 2017. It is adjusted monthly. Uh, for this project, the <coughs> capacity reserve fee would be $31,219.24. And the, uh, the approved average daily wastewater flow for this project is 2,481 gallons per day. Um, any flows in excess of the uh, Approved amounts are subject to the additional approvals. That 2,481 gallons per day inc already includes the, the does include the already uh, four, 472 gallons per day that the site is approved for. Uh, the proposed project discharges into a private sewer system that shall remain private, and the operation and maintenance of the system shall be the responsibility of the owner. Um, 
the need to provide a sewer easement association agreement or and or other legal documentation authorizing the use of the private sewer and document documentation showing responsibility of the operation and maintenance of the same. Conduct a CCTV inspection of the existing private sewer, uh, providing documentation of locations, elevations, and sizes of sewer lines, manholes, services, repairing deficiencies discovered. Provide the district with both an electronic and paper copy of the report and documentation of the repairs. All sewer services shall have a detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade uh, and directly above the pipe and trace of wire installed adjacent to the sewer. All sewer shall be installed at a minimum depth of four feet. Final plans signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permits. Applicant will obtain final approval from the district to confirm elevations of existing infrastructure and desirable slopes prior to obtaining sewer extension permit. Complete application association fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. And um, uh, sewer permit is required for each building. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer, sewer work shall be completed. And then uh, provide, finally, professionally surveyed electronic uh, georeference CAD drawings, a stamped PDF of the CAD drawing and stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Move approval, Mr. Chairman, with the Provisos stipulated by the superintendent. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or items for discussion on the motion? I have a, I have got a question um, regarding the uh, marking tapes for the services. Are you, these are just going to be for the new services, not correct? Ask them to provide marking tape on the older services. No. Or are you just, no. Okay. Um, and um, I see that the correspondence here is from uh, the engineer representing the owner. Correct. Has there been any communication with the owner about these recommended conditions? Through their engineer, there has been. Through their engineer. Um, and the engineer represents to us that there, there's no issues associated with the conditions that we nope. recommended. Okay. And uh, as as I have been doing, once uh, approval is given, the uh, owner is. I have them sign a copy of the approval letter and return it to the district before we issue a, any permits. Um, Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve this item with the conditions recommended by the superintendent. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? One abstention, Mr. McSorley. Okay, next item under new business is uh, 419 U.S. Route 1. Uh, the loan owners of Lynn Libby are requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from their store and manufacturing facilities located at 419 U.S. Route 1. Currently, Lynn Libby's utilizes a septic system. The proposed, uh, they propose connecting the district sewer that is located on Royal Ridge Road via an easement through an abutting parcel by constructing a private sewer service within this easement. The proposed system would consist of approximately 400 feet of six inch sewer service, one sampling manhole and a grease trap to service the kitchen waste. Portland Water District's water meter data was used to identify the peak quarter consumption rate at 400 gallons per day. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The capacity reserve fee is based on typical wastewater characteristics and proposed peak quarter average daily flow. As noted, preliminary sampling of the effluent indicates high strength waste uh, with a combined BOD TSS concentration of 13 milligrams per liter per mainstay subsurface rules and adjustment factor of 1.8 was utilized to calculate the capacity reserve fee. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is 1554 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record construction cost index. 
for the proposed flow of 400 gallons per day and an adjustment factor of 1.8. The total capacity reserve fee due is $11,188.80. Uh, this is due prior to issuance any uh, permits and any wastewater discharge above the, uh, the uh, discharge limitations are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The wastewater discharge is limited to uh, the, uh, in accordance with the table I provided, any future flows above these limitations are subject to additional fees. So the flow would be li limited to 400 gallons per day, pH to 5, POD to 3.3 pounds per day, COD to 6.7 pounds per day, and TSS to 1 pound per day. Uh, all sewer pipes shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire. A grease intercept permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Inline food and strains are required downstream from any garbage disposal, food macerator, or similar equipment that allowed food waste to enter the sewer. Monthly composite samples of the combined wastewater is required, of which will be tested for BOD, COD, TSS, ammonia, and pH, and the data will provide the district on a monthly basis, and the superintendent will have the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained or, um, and then uh, would reduce it as appropriate also. Uh, super permit is required and that completed application associated fee uh, submitted uh, to the district prior to it being uh, written. No exit sewer work shall be completed. Um, final plans will be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits including details of the proposed manhole and grease trap. Uh, provide an execute copy of the proposed easement and provide professionally survey electronic uh, georeference CAD drawings stamped PDF of the uh, CAD drawing and uh, submit to the district upon completion of the project. Move approval, Mr. Chairman, with the conditions enumerated by the superintendent. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments for the superintendent? So we didn't receive plans for not the actual sewer layout. I, I have now received the, 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 the plans myself. Yeah. So are they connecting in the Higgis Parkway? Royal, Royal Ridge Road, they're connecting to Royal Ridge Royal Road. Road. Is there a service connection there? Yep. For there was always, when that sewer is actually put in, there was a service stub provided that services the parcel that they have the easement going through. Okay. They, they own both parcels. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, their, their, their plan is to move their facilities, their manufacturing facilities to that back parcel. Okay. Retain the retail up front. And retain the retail portion up front. Other questions, comments? There being none, all those in favor of the motion? None opposed. Okay, items C and D are two executive sessions dealing with uh, potential real estate transactions. Um, and uh, so we'll need a motion to recess to executive session. We will return to executive session uh, following to possibly take action um, on both of these on well scheduled to take action on two of these matters one of the matters um, the lease agreement from Verizon um, I'm informed by the superintendent that they did not get back to us with some follow-up information that was going to be the subject of the executive <coughs> first executive session so um, I guess what I'd like to do is table the executive session listed under new business item C um, and then we'll take a motion to go to executive session regarding the potential sale of some district property um, mr. chairman I'd, I'd like to move to table executive session 
for a discussion concerning the potential lease of district property pursuant to Title I, MRSA, Section 4056C. Second to the motion to table, please. Second. All right, all those in favor of the table. Thank you, six to zero. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to now move to move into executive session for a discussion concerning the potential sale of district property pursuant to Title I, MRSA, Section 4056C. Thank you. Thank you. There a second? Second. Jason, do we have any seconds? Uh, all those in favor of recessing to executive session? Six in favor, none opposed. All right, we will move to the uh, town manager's conference room for the executive session, and we'll be returning here as quickly as we can get through this. Sent them back. Okay, no, we have returned from executive session and I am calling the regular meeting back to order. Um, our next agenda item under new business was item E, discussion of a Verizon wireless lease agreement. Um, as I stated earlier, um, Verizon has not provided us with follow up information that we needed uh, to move this forward, so I'm asking for a motion to table item E under new business. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded by Ben. Uh, all those in favor of tabling? None opposed. Thank you. Uh, now, under item F of new business is uh, the unit till purchase and sale agreement for a 70 by 135 foot parcel off of Eastern Road, which uh, which we've been discussing with Unitil for a year or so, I think. Thereabouts. Uh, and this is associated with their uh, upgrade of uh, gas lines in Scarborough and points, I guess, towards South Portland. And Mr. Chairman. Radio system upgrade. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to approve the contract for the superintendent to sign subject to minor technical modifications for selling a portion of the lot known as map R073 lot 018 and the proceeds of such sale to be deposited into the fixed asset replacement fund. Second. Second by Jason. Thank you. Discussion? Points of clarification, the Superintendent, anything that you want to point out, Dave? Or, uh, uh, the, just that the, the parcel is located at the old treatment plant site off of Eastern Road, um, just for uh, the public to get an orientation of where it's at. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion? Unopposed. To zero. Uh, item G is uh, the budget summary. Move approval. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> I was going to say motion move approve. approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Um, I guess I'd note that the uh, that the budget uh, report indicates that we are approximately uh, $800,000. I'm sorry, I take that back. Um, that we are approximately uh, $50,000 um, below our year to date budget. And uh, so I guess we're tracking on the right side of that. So at this point, uh, at this point, things are, are looking pretty optimistic. Uh, all those in favor of the approval of the budget? Anyone opposed? None opposed. Thank you. And 
Item 8 is public comments. Uh, I have no public comments here this evening. Item 9 is trustee comments. Aubrey. None. Happy spring, everybody. Hey. That's it. It's going to come. Oh, spring is here. Summer is what we're waiting for. No, I'm not. Actually, this is Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't hold out. <laughs> there won't be one more frost, though. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Okay. No comment. No comment. I uh, want to wish good luck to all the Scarborough sports teams that will be competing here in the, the near future. Uh, we got several good uh, teams that uh, have a chance at doing very well. Uh, also want to uh, wish all the seniors uh, a good time during this graduation time of year and ceremonies and all the good things that come with it. We uh, pray that you uh, take due care and, and remember that this is the rest of your life, so be careful out there. And lastly, I want to go kudos to the king and queen of the Scarborough High School prom, Miss Lily Volk and Mr. Hayden McSorley. Uh, wanted to say congrats to Glenn for taking a step up and taking over on the operations and also to the other staff members that are uh, stepping forward. I've always said we've got a fantastic staff down there and Dave does a great job with uh, making sure people are ready to move into the next role. So thank you, Dave. Thank you to all the staff and uh, congratulations, gentlemen. Um, thank you for all your efforts. Great. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to compliment the superintendent on his uh, stepping forward and instructing uh, at the Jet Sea uh, uh, training session for uh, plan operations. And uh, also wish all of our staff members well in their new positions. I'm sure the superintendent will keep us posted on everybody's progress in their, in their new roles. And, uh, and I think uh, trying to encourage them to require any additional training and uh, workshop types of activities to assist them is something that's in your plan of action. So um, just want to uh, commend all of them for being willing to make these changes and assume new roles uh, when you lose an employee who's been there for 46 or 47 years, things have to change. And, uh, and so far, the feedback seems to be that the changes are being handled in a very positive way, so I think that's great. Um, I'd like to wish everybody a safe and happy Memorial Day weekend coming up. Uh, I think Saturday is supposed to be pretty okay, and then more rain coming in later on, maybe Monday even. Um, and also, as Rob said, this is graduation time for our high school seniors, and I just want to wish all of them uh, Congratulate all of them on a happy event, but also uh, express the wishes that they would be careful and prudent in their, uh, in their celebration activities. This is the first step in the rest of your lives, and you want to get off in a real constructive way. Uh, with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor? None opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you. I got to